going back to Clane Tamed Zoo. So, yeah, unfortunately, this episode, no time lapse. Because, um, main reason, I'm recording an episode of Minecraft Zoology later on. And time lapse does take up quite a bit of storage space. So, I want to make sure I have enough space for that and this video. So, and yeah, I feel like. If I don't have time lapse, I might be able to work a little bit faster. So, oops, no time lapse today. Today we're going to do the classical uh, progress updates that I've been doing in a few episodes. So, last episode, I have built this entrance area, and today I'm continuing off it, going and like adding extra stuff to the area, completing the fencing and whatnot, so it actually it works as a proper zoo. So, so far I've added a restroom. It's all bathroom here so we have toilets got the sign there and as you can see I have both men and women sections so on this side it says men and months because months is Afrikaans word for men and since the zoo is set in South Africa in the early days Afrikaans is pretty widely spoken now yeah so I have this little cool little screen to protect to uh, stop the view of the door in the cool addition, I use the uh, what is it? So the classic copper fence mixed in with this glass opaque wall to black, so it now it looks like a cool metal sheet. I do need to take this off the grid, however, because as it is now, it is a little tight of a squeeze, and then if I do try and move it forward, it's a two meter gap, which is a bit too big. So yeah, I'll, later I'll. Uh, take this off the grid and move it like half a meter forward so that should be enough space oh yeah and the sign says toilet because in English and Afrikaans toilet is the same only you pronounce it differently and yeah we have women and we have damas and well I guess modern times in Afrikaans you would say throwins but since this is early century and early 20th century damas is a bit more of a traditional word it is the Dutch word for women I believe so yeah Put that down there and same thing gonna move this sheet forward and another thing with this toilet uh, building is that I have indented the windows so while normally if you are gonna place windows there would be you kind of have them this weird sticking out bit you have this thing here like this same thing with the doors I decided to inset them in the wall and the, how I did that is that I didn't use actual wall pieces, I use these relief pieces, these are uh, these little grid pieces, yeah, which I've been doing for quite a bit of structure, so you can see the inside of this has all those pieces there. And using that I was able to create these little gaps I can slide the window and the door into. So yeah. In the I might add an interior, I'm not too sure on it. If I do add an interior, then I'll actually replace these windows with actual windows you can see through, but um, yeah, I'm not, not too sure on the interior because I'm not sure if we're going to look at it or not, but I'll decide later, we'll see how it turns out. So yeah, otherwise bathroom came out quite nicely. And then on this side, yeah, I am on the middle of making a gazebo, and I just wanted to take this time to kind of show you the process of how one make circular structures in Planet Zoo. So if you already know this, sorry I'm repeating information to you, but in case you don't, then it's a cool trick. So what you want to do, what most people do is take this mud column, since it's an on-grid piece, and then, okay, so you want to try and set up a column like that, and however you want your circular structure, let me see if I can get this right. So let's say I want to make this a big old round piece. So what I do is I set up this post here. So it's supposed to be like a frame. So kind of on this gazebo, it's one of these frames on the side. What you do is you want to select that and then duplicate around like that. So you have a line of the this little this long line. And you want to select them and you kind of want to rotate it. And what I recommend doing is putting on the angle snap, so either 15 degrees, 30 degrees, or however wide you want it. So for the, I'm just going to go 15 degrees. And then you want to fill in those gaps with like whatever you want. So let's say I'm just going to put these brick columns in there. 
and then to make this a circle okay this doesn't look that great but this is a kind of a concept to show you so what you want to do is delete this line along there and there and this is one segment of your structure so just want to grab everything there except the middle piece rotate it again and you just want to grab these root pieces here and then you rotate it along like that and you just keep on duplicating it and then you come up with this kind of circular structure so you just go all the way around so that's, let me let me finish it off all the way Boom, like that and I got a cool little circular structure so if you ever want to do not one know how to do the circular structures now you do and then you obviously change the pattern so in this case I've made a gazebo here and so I'm just gonna give you a little demonstration so I'm just gonna delete this side here because when I rotate it this line along here will become that side I just have it in now so you know how to space the thing so uses wood planks to act as a roof bit. Delete all the things there. And let's give them this column post. And then what I'm going to do is select everything except for these middle columns because I don't want them duplicated. Rotate it around, around like that. Pieces once more from this side. I think we've selected everything, and then I am going to rotate it. Boom, like that. And see, we have the startings of a gazebo. So, another thing I want to add here is a staircase. So, I'm going to quickly go in and edit that in. Okay, now I've added this little staircase in. What I'm just going to do is duplicate it so I have it on both sides. I'm going to have to delete this fence post. Yeah, so as you can see, I have the stairs on both sides. And now what I can do is select everything again except for the middle bits. But I don't want to duplicate. Is happening here okay select everything once everything selected I can continue the rotating process and now boom I have stairs on all four sides and that is the gazebo done so I can probably either remove or just sink down this middle column here sink down come on game Oh wait, there's two in there, that's why. Boom. And ta-da, we have a gazebo. So yeah, that's, that's kind of an advantage of not having a time lapse. I can do some real-time building and show you the process. So yeah, um, I do want to build a Lima exhibit, I think. Some kind of primate exhibit over here. It will be round, probably use the same technique. And then add some gardening stuff there. So I'm just going to do that the lemurs do some gardenings also work on the fences and the rest of the zoo and I'll catch you in the next progress update okay so back with a few progress updates I wanted to show you the gate I made for the actual estate because there's the zoo gate over here and I also decided to redo the gate of the estate I actually did this last episode but I forgot to show it off I think I had it in the intro clip but didn't actually mention it in the video so here it is got the original sign still there and redid the gate because it doesn't make sense that the estate would do up this fancy entrance for the zoo and then leave the the gate as just like a small chain link fence so did that all nicely and as you can see here I have added another building to the side so this is supposed to be a, a staff room 
So the staff working in the ticket booth and any zookeepers and that, they can just come. This will be a little break room for them. And I also add another shelter over here. So we have hay storage. This is a cool little hay pile idea I think came up by Ruble Trillions. Did it in his Tivoli Zoo. So I put that here. I already had, uh, I think, another hay pile by the stable. So I guess zoo-wise it would make sense to have another storage area for hay and other stuff there so zookeepers don't have to go all the way up to the stables to bring it down here for the animals. So yeah, and then a couple things I did with the lions. So first of all, I added a little barrier fence here. Because obviously these are lions, these are dangerous animals, you don't want the children and the people getting too close to them and losing an arm, so... Now we have this fence and areas where the keepers can come in I added this chain so yeah the keeper can just walk over the chain. I know it's a bit low but it's kind of the best the game does to get a hanging chain and the keepers can come in and feed the lion there or if they were gonna go to the back then they can. Yeah so this fence doesn't entirely match the exhibit which is fine because that's what it is. It was an addition after the exhibit was made because when it was initially made it was for private menagerie so I guess they didn't have public safety in mind because it, the public wasn't going to come and see it so you didn't need this fence whereas now since it's open to the public you're going to need a fence to stop people from getting too close to the line so yeah. and I've added a fence to the entire perimeter on that side so that's just to stop people from walking on the grass into the zoo and since there's a fence over here stopping people from getting to the estate, I decided not to put a fence here. I don't know, it didn't look so well. Like I said again, all these fences and stuff, as the zoo progresses and changes, they will take more land in there. And eventually we will build like proper walls up, but for now the fencing is kind of temporary to allow for further expansion. It's just there to stop people from trespassing into the, the area. So yeah, I assume here yeah, people will just have common sense, be like, oh, okay, there's tall grass, let's not walk in that direction, there's clearly nothing there. So yeah. And, well, I put some benches down on here by the lion enclosure, so just another trick in case you don't know how you can put benches down without having a path is, what I do is you put the path down first, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select select the grid so the paths are nice and square like that then I can grab one of these benches and it's all aligned up nicely there and then delete the paths and the benches stay so yeah, that's a neat trick if you didn't know that now you do so if you like me and don't really care about paths you just care about decorating stuff then you can just put down benches like so and it works for picnic tables and bins as well. So yeah, the benches I put a few here but I don't imagine they would be used that much simply because there's not a, there's not any shade here, we wouldn't want to sit here in the sun and I did put some benches down in some other shaded spots like over here underneath these trees and here there's some trees shading it and this area also receives a bit of shade so I put some benches down there. Yeah, but back to the shade problem, I did change these trees out. So these before were, I believe, the, the um, beach farm? Coconut farms, yeah. I had these coconut farms, and the reason was because as I go with every episode, I do want to like change out the trees so the trees have actual growth to them. So my initial idea was I have coconut farms starting like that. Eventually it'll grow a bit bigger, and then we have the very tall coconut palms but I instead switched them out for the date palms because well the date palms when they grow bigger they actually cast quite a bit bigger of a canopy and then eventually I'll replace them with one of these custom palms I made so yeah it'll cast quite a bit of shade in this area I initially wanted the thin palm so it doesn't obstruct the view from the exhibit but I guess in the end 
the other palms. I want to abstract that bit much of a view and they cast shade, which I think is more important because zoos are very shady. Sh shady as in <laughs> they have lots of shade. Not shady as in sketchy. You, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So yeah, I'm also in this area I'll probably take some plant some saplings and then as the episodes progress, as years progress, the trees will grow up to be bigger. So Maybe three, four episodes down the line, these palm trees may just be grown up. I'll probably add some trees in this field over here, and still need to work on the exhibit as well as the planting over here, and there'll definitely be some trees in that area. Before I cut away to the next progression cut, I do want to show you a cool, neat little trick that I saw on the Bro Nation Discord, and this, I believe, just Gordon posted this on the server. You can see this is a habitat gate sunk into the ground so this is a neat way to hide your habitat gates unfortunately you can't completely sink them I don't know in the video just Gordon posted he showed you can sink them but all the way but I can only get it up where you can show this little bit over here and that is a bit annoying but it, I think it is better than having this big old gates along the wall because it doesn't match any of the things so it's easier to ignore this little wooden piece on the floor than a big old gate yeah, so the way you do this I'm going to show you over here with our Hemsbok is with the barrier this works best with null barriers you want to sink it down on both sides so you see you can sink in a gate oh wait I'm you gotta make sure there's no habitat gate because the game only allows one gate. So we grab our gate, and as you can see, we sink it down. So I just want it a bit more lower. So we can come in, sink it down a bit more. And to make and to get the habitats to sink, you want to have the height mode, this flat top, editable bottom mode. That way, you can actually sink them. So yeah, that, that's submerged all the way, so the game doesn't like that. Let me raise it a bit more. Come on. There you have it. I was sunk in. Oh no, it's facing the wrong way. But yeah. So you get it placed this the right way. Boom! Something habitat gate. And the reason why I say you want null barriers is because if you have any other type of barrier, let me replace this with say concrete, it comes up with this huge thing. So if you have null barrier at least, you can cover it up however you want. These side pieces though you can lower. Bada bing, bada boom. And you, if you want, you can connect, uh, what are they called, the animal trade centers to them and keepers do actually come here and throw the animals in the exhibit. So the habitat gate is still functioning. I have done this before and there are some problems. Sometimes the animals get boxed up in the, in the ground, which means the, ga the game just struggles with it a lot and eventually the game does give up and throw the box on the side. So then you can just unbox it and place it wherever you want so boxing can be a bit of an issue but if you're using an animal that doesn't get boxed a lot so like these hems box there's no way that where they would get boxed in this exhibit so it's fine but like I guess climbing animals like your primates or your big cats maybe you don't want to do it because the boxing can be an issue but anyway yeah that's a cool little tip that you can use in your zoos maybe and it's probably less known about. So yeah, I'm gonna carry on, finish the garden area in this place, as well as the final exhibit. And we should be, should have just one more progress update for the video. See you in a bit. Okay, final progress update. I figured we start here by the entrance. You can see some of the stuff I built there in the background. But yeah, also, I initially had concrete columns long here and I replaced it with these bollards so 
a bit better, a bit more area appropriate. Yeah. Let's walk in the zoo, pretend we're a guest. We can come up here, buy a ticket, and get on into the zoo. And what we first greeted with is this big lima aviary. So, yeah, let's go on. I'll explain the hassles I had making this. So, quite a big problem of me trying to get the lemurs in, trying to make sure the lemurs don't escape. So, first, let's start at the roof. So, this is made from these new old fence posts, I believe. Fence post 3. So, yeah made the roof like that had to rotate a whole bunch around and by the bing we have this cool little round aviary cap and this is the in-game chain link fence and to make sure the lemurs don't escape I had to put on the the whatchamacallit the climb proof structure so kinda of, it yeah it, it's a uh, it doesn't ruin the design that much. It's it's pretty easy to ignore but yeah. I'd unfortunately put it on there. Like, there's also other problems like this. This rope barrier was initially wood. And the lemurs would see that climbable, like a climbable frame. So they would jump from there onto there through the fence. And so I had to replace it with the rope. I, I do hope in the future Frontier makes the rope climbable. But it does mean I'm going to have to replace this fence again. Because lemurs might climb through it. But for now... Rope isn't a climbable object for some reason, and so I can just use it as a barrier tool. Yeah, as for the design of this, I kind of base it on what is currently a Gibbon exhibit and used to be a ring-tailed lemur exhibit in the Johannesburg Zoo. The current it still stands. I'm not sure when that exhibit was built, but kind of same idea: big round dome and this rock mound. So it might be this exhibit might be a little modern for the zoo but I mean I think it's it's not too far fetched and I guess it just means late it'll age well in the future. Might see it come into modern times. But yeah. For the door over here I had to keep it as a keeper door. I initially tried to have it as a sunken door, like the trick I showed earlier, but like I also said earlier, it doesn't work well with climbing animals. They get boxed a lot and they get boxed in the ground the game trying to spit them out here but there's rocks in the way so it spits them out in the roof if it if it spits them out at all so just to reduce hassle to get these lemurs in here put them like this and if they do get boxed up they just get spat out on here so it's not that big a deal yeah I would like to have a secondary cage over this you know just a double door but there's no proper way to do it right now. Maybe if in the future we get chain link pieces, I will add that. But for now, it's a single door. Yeah, and this door leads to the inside of this rock, which would kind of be their night room. So you can see along here we have some plaster pieces exposed by the rock. And these black spaces both represent doors that the lemurs can go into. And there would be the, the inside part of the exhibit. And then the, the keepers can come inside there. Also, I messed around with the climbing structure, but I might have overdone it with the climbing frame. So, I do have this main like, climbing structure going around there, and then I also put some climbing structures along here and different parts. So, just lemurs will climb around the exhibit a bit more. Yeah, near the doors, I did put these climbing structures, so lemurs will go on there and put this hay, hoping they would sleep on it, but they don't really see the hay as. Yeah, as you can see, this lemur is just sleeping on the platform there. You can sometimes sleep on the, on the rock up here. So I tried, but it doesn't really work. Also, as with everything, this, this zoo's welfare is turned off, otherwise the game will scream at me. But I did put in a water bowl here, just so it kind of looks like this would be a feeding station. And the lemurs would come up here, and then the guests have a nice view at the lemurs, almost at like eye level. Yeah, that's cool. Why are you two sitting inside each other? And your movements are almost identical, it's creepy. Yeah, actually, let me show you the habitable space these lemurs take up. So, go here. Okay, this would be funny. Show me traversable area. Now, oh, there we go. As you can see, this 
they can cover quite a bit of this exhibit. They have this big rock up here they can come and climb and sit on, and climb all these frames, and walk walk all along. They even parts of the floor they can go on. Most of it is obstructed by rock. I don't know why. Sometimes this floor is in blue, so they should be able to walk on it. I don't know. It depends on the lima, I guess. Okay, today is apparently a day where they can't walk on the floor, but it's a little bit finicky. Initially when I built this, I just had this this ring structure and this rocks and they could only walk there. So I had to kind of add some of the climbing frames so they can access the floor bits and this climbing structure so they can access these bits and walk around a bit more. So yeah, that's the Lima exhibit. Are quite nice I think. I really really like the climbing structures in this game. It's really satisfying to see them actually being able to use your climbing structures. So I believe there's either five or six lemurs in there. One male and all the others are female. Ah there you can see. Went on the floor. But anyway let's move on to some of the, uh, the gardening stuff I did. So we did here, added a planter here and here. And we have some lavenders, some azaleas, and some baby palms. And here we have lavenders, or oh, it's not actually lavender in the game, but I'm pretending it's lavender. And some dwarf kernels. And around the gazebo, I went for a bit more of a naturalistic style approach, not like a pampered up garden like this. This is a bit more overgrown with bushes, and I put a couple cycads in here, and some baby palms. Yeah, and over here we have another kind of, how do you call it, pampered up garden. Why is this tree shaking like that? That is so weird. This is a sunken in mon mon monkey, yes, that's weird, monkey puzzle tree. And the tops of the tree is shaking like that. I didn't realize that because I was always playing with paws, but yeah, that's a shaky tree, okay. I'll just leave that in there because eventually I will, as I, as I said before, all these trees, these palms, this monkey puzzle, this small oak set, they will grow up. So, garden there, a little planter up here, and I fleshed out this front area of this restroom a bit more, so we do have a bench. And this tree was previously planted in here, so we just put a little planter around it. Put some bricks and pavement there. I think that came out quite nice, so... This area does seem very empty right now, and the reason being is like the space will be open. I will, it's open now because I'm going to build stuff later on as the zoo progresses, we'll build things. Like I'm thinking adding a flamingo exhibit here, and maybe as I build stuff, I'll add more planters. And another reason why this area feels empty is just that there's no big trees here, so. And yeah, like I said, I don't want to cheat, I want trees to actually grow and progress so I've placed a whole bunch of saplings so we have these ones here in these cages and I want to say maybe the zoo ran out of tree cages so started using staves and like rope to tie around the tree just to keep them upright I'm not sure what trees these will grow up to maybe oak maybe like sycamore plane trees still not too sure but yeah um so like to get the positioning of these trees. I did place down the big trees first to see how it will look in the future and then I had to replace them with small trees. Don't worry, give it like a decade or two and all these trees will be big and this place will be lush because modern zoos, you, you see them you see them as big lush having big tall trees and the reason was because they were planted long ago and that's what I'm doing now. I'm planting all these trees since old times and then as the zoo ages, you'll have big lush trees. And even even just without the trees, this, this area is very open in the back. If I had like a wall, it probably will seem a bit more completed or just buildings here. The area will seem a bit more rounded off. So as I progress with the zoo, we'll add more. We'll eventually add a wall and we'll add more buildings and exhibits to that. So yeah, I think I added some saplings over here as well. So yeah, I added a bench under this little sapling. So you can see this area. Also small trees but just I think the wall really caps off the area as well a little bit better and the trees in the back. 
well, that was already plotted in this tape does kind of help it, so yeah. But anyway, I think that is all I got to show for this episode. Oh, these palm trees aren't supposed to be here. You aren't supposed to be here. Okay. I forgot to delete those. I'll, I'll delete them now, now. But yeah, they, they were supposed to be small palm trees. That's how I test it. Place big, palm, big trees and then replace them with the small trees. Oops. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll hopefully see you in the next episode. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.